Let's bring in our senior White House correspondent, Pamela Brown. She's here in the Situation Room with me. Uh, Pamela, the president has hired a, a law firm to represent him in this fight over his tax returns. Tell our viewers what you're learning. That's right. The fight over the president's tax returns escalated today, Wolf, with this letter from outside lawyers for the president uh, to the general counsel of the Treasury Department. And this letter basically is saying that this request from the House Ways and Means Committee chairman is a gross abuse of power, that it is presidential harassment. And even if there is a legitimate purpose that they claim, the real reason is politics, that they don't like the president because he's in another party. Here's what the letter says. Even when Ways and Means can and identify some legitimate committee purpose. It cannot request tax returns and return information to punish taxpayers for their speech or politics. It goes on to reference the audit that the president says his taxes are under by the IRS, saying Chairman Neal's request is especially inappropriate because, as noted above, he is asking for tax returns, administrative files, and other information regarding an ongoing IRS examination. Now, as we know, Wolf, tax returns can still be released to the public, even if they are under audit. But this is our first glimpse into the legal argument that the president's outside attorneys are making, and they ask the Treasury Department to consult with the Justice Department attorneys before making any decision. Because ultimately, Wolf, this is up to the IRS to, to, to figure out how to handle this request and, and the law and what it means for the president, this unprecedented request. As you know, Democrats have argued they have the legal footing to do to do this, that this is their oversight responsibility. So this is just beginning of the fight, Wolf. Because in, in the law, it says that if uh, the House Ways and Means Committee asks for the tax returns of someone, the Secretary of the Treasury shall furnish such committee with any return or return information specified. So that's what the Democrat our Democrats' argument is. A White House source, as you just heard in Jim Acosta's mm -hmm. report, says they're willing to take this fight all the way to the Supreme Court. So what does that signal about how long this uh, fight could take? I spoke to one source uh, familiar with the matter today who said it's going to be a while until anyone sees the president's tax returns. This is going to be a long fight. And this administration official did say they're willing to take it all the way up to the Supreme Court, Wolf. Um, and, and even, let's just remember, even if the IRS does grant this request from the committee's uh, chairman, that doesn't mean it automatically goes to the public. There is a whole process for that. But what is clear here today is that the president's uh, and his team of lawyers are going to fight this tooth and nail all the way to the Supreme Court. Very lengthy four-page single-space yeah. letter that they wrote to the Treasury Department. Uh, Pamela, thank you very much. Uh, joining us now, uh, Congressman Akeem Jeffries of New York. He's a member of the Judiciary Committee. He's also a House Democratic leader. He's the chairman of the House Democratic Caucus. Uh, Congressman, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me on, Wolf. So an administration official tells CNN that protecting President Trump's tax returns from being released is a hill they're willing to die on. You heard that in Jim Acosta's report. Is this a hill Democrats are also willing to die on? Well, we're going to continue to proceed responsibly uh, with our oversight function, which is consistent with the separation of powers in the United States Constitution. Every president since Richard Nixon has disclosed his taxes to the American people. Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, George H.W. Bush, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, Barack Obama have all disclosed their taxes. Democrats and Republicans, progressives and conservatives, the left and the right, a singular individual, Donald Trump, is refusing to follow this important practice. We, as a separate and co-equal branch of government, are trying to bring him into compliance. The president's attorney in this uh, letter uh, says uh, that this effort by Democrats, in the attorney's word, uh, is a transparent effort by one par political party to harass an official from the other party. Your response to that? Well, uh, Chairman Richie Neal of the Ways and Means Committee is incredibly well-respected. He's a thoughtful individual. He's an institutionalist who cares about the House and our role as a separate and co-equal branch of government. We don't work for Donald Trump. We work for the American people. Uh, we have a constitutional responsibility to serve as a check and balance on a potentially out of control executive branch, and that is what we are doing. That's not the Richie Neal playbook. That's not the Nancy Pelosi playbook. That's the James Madison playbook. Are you completely confident that the courts will side with Congress? I think that the law is pretty clear, as you indicated, Wolf, uh, that the statute says the Secretary of the Treasury shall provide uh, these tax returns upon request 
from the chair of the Ways and Means Committee. That's not discretionary language. That is mandatory language. No singular individual in this country is above the law. Donald Trump is not above the law. We're hopeful uh, that the Article III uh, federal courts will see it our way as well. What exactly do Democrats hope to learn from the, the six years of these tax returns? Well, I think the tax returns that we seek, again, are consistent with the fact that the President of the United States in the past has consistently disclosed these tax returns to the American people so that there can be disclosure, so that there can be some understanding as to whether there are financial interests uh, that would lead someone seeking the office of the presidency or serving in the office of the presidency uh, to be distracted by other interests that don't clearly relate to the well-being of the American people. And that's what this is all about. We're going to continue to focus on the kitchen table pocketbook issues of importance to the American people. Richie Neal has led the effort to help protect the Affordable Care Act and people with pre-existing conditions. At the same time, we have a separate oversight lane, and that's what we're doing. Should all presidential candidates be required by law, a new law, obviously, to release their tax returns? Uh, certainly, that is the case. And as part of H.R. 1, our For the People Act, uh, which is designed to help clean up corruption and the mess in Washington, D.C., and bring our democracy to life on a uh, moving forward basis, whether it's a Democrat or Republican, uh, that absolutely should be a requirement. Uh, there would be no need for this law if, in fact, Donald Trump uh, would simply make the decision to adhere to the precedent set by Ronald Reagan and George W. Bush, he refuses to do so. Let's get to the president and the border uh, uh, with Mexico. His message just moments ago, and I'm quoting the president now, our economy, our country, he said, our country is full, full. What's your reaction to that? Well, the president, unfortunately, continues to peddle xenophobia as part of a well-calculated political strategy, apparently, to get elected. It's clear that we have a broken immigration system. Uh, it's clear that we need comprehensive immigration reform, uh, but we should do it in a bipartisan way, in a responsible fashion, Democrats and Republicans coming together uh, to fix our broken system, consistent with the notion that we are a nation of immigrants, a gorgeous mosaic of people from across the world. That's what makes America a great country. We are also a country anchored in the premise of the rule of law, and we can do this together without the irresponsible rhetoric and conduct and behavior that far too often comes out of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue if the president would only get out of the way. On another issue, uh, Congressman, how do you think uh, the former Vice President Joe Biden has handled uh, these stories from these women coming forward talking about how they felt uncomfortable during their interactions with him? Well, these are serious allegations uh, that have been made by serious individuals, and I think uh, moving forward, Joe Biden is going to have to take them seriously, as he appears to have done uh, in terms of at least his initial video response, acknowledging uh, that he is going to respect the personal space of individuals and refrain from behavior uh, that makes people uncomfortable. That's the right thing to do, and now he has to carry it out as he uh, moves forward, either as a candidate or as a former uh, vice president. Congressman Akeem Jeffries of New York, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Wolf.